From the CUBE studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to the CUBE Conversation here from our Palo Alto studios. I'm John Furrier, host of the CUBE. We're here with our remote crew, getting all the interviews, getting all the stories that matter during this time. We're all sheltering in place during the COVID crisis. We've got a great returning guest, John Madison, EVP of products and chief marketing officer of Fortinet. John, great to see you. Uh, looking good with the home studio there, getting used to it. Yeah. Indeed, great to be here again, John. Thanks for coming on, I really appreciate it. We're hearing a lot about SASE, which is you know, secure access network edge, obviously zero trust network access. Uh, what does that all mean now these days? What is this SASE? Well, there's definitely a lot of hype around the word SASE, which is the security of the edge. Uh, for us, actually, it, it confirms a strategy that we've had since the beginning of the company in two important concepts. One is uh, the coming together of uh, networking and security. We refer to it as security driven networking. And we've been doing it using ASICs and appliances for a long time. Uh, we're now going to expand it to uh, cloud as well. So that's one concept, again, bringing together networking and security or converging them in a way. And then the second concept is more around a platform approach. So if you look at the definition of SASE, it includes uh, SD-WAN, it includes Web Gateway as a Service, Zero Trust, CASB, uh, WAF, et cetera. And so, bringing those together in a platform approach, we refer to it as the fabric. So we're actually really happy uh, about those two concepts coming together. Uh, maybe the name itself <laughs> could, be, could be different, but uh, definitely the concepts and the technologies play really well to our strategy. Yeah, it's SASE, S-A-S-E, not two A's, not like SAS, software as a service, which everyone knows is cloud. Yeah, so, I, I, I tried using the full name, but then I've reverted back to SASE again. So. Yeah, yeah, short and SASE, keep it short and sweet. Um, okay, well, this is a super important, relevant topic for multiple reasons. One is COVID has kind of accelerated the future for everybody. And you know we've been kind of riffing on Twitter and throughout the industry, I've been calling it the big IOT uh, experiment because the unforecasted disruption of COVID has forced everyone to work at home. So the notion of work changes, workplace is now home, workforce, the people, how they're interacting with the networks, workloads, workflows, all changing. New expectations, new experiences. This is the real deal. And the edge is where the action is. That's the big, new, obvious, architectural highlight here. Yeah, so we talked last time, I think it, we're, we're just beginning this work from home uh, element, but um, we're still here. And I think what it says is that, and what it's forced is that uh, enterprises and customers need to look at their edges and they're increasing. So we always, the WAN edge was a new one over the last two years as we introduced SD-WAN. They had a data center edge. Uh, they had an endpoint edge. Uh, now you have a, a home edge. And so you've got to apply uh, security as a cloud edge as well. You've got to apply security to these edges. Uh, and the key is the flexibility to apply the security you want and you need against those edges. And so we're seeing some customers right now look at setting up mini enterprise networks to protect that home edge, again, in the, in the homes of their executives or developers. And we reported with uh, the news you guys had a couple of months ago around just that such been a feeding frenzy for hackers and bad actors to go after the home environment um, as well as the IT guys who are working from home, <laughs> you know, the cloud consumption's shifted as well. You're seeing the cloud players doing extremely well because now you have more cloud, you have more vulnerabilities at the edge with the home. This is changing completely, increasing the, act the attacks. Yeah, the attack vectors, you know, are predominantly still actually, you know, a lot of phishing, but then if you're on the network, that attack vector is very important. So for us, and you know, we did an acquisition last week of opaque networks because that gave us an additional consumption model, an additional uh, form factor. So if somebody's going from the home straight into the cloud or the uh, peering off, uh, branching off an SD-WAN connection straight into the cloud, we can now apply that cloud edge security through our, our SASE capabilities. And so again, the ability to have security at all these edges has become very important going forward. So for us, now we've got appliances, we've got virtual machines, we've got uh, cloud delivery, uh, and this is becoming very, very important to customers. I'm not saying, and customers are not saying they're going to go to just cloud only going forward. They're going to be hybrid. And so having those options is very important. You mentioned opaque networks. We reported that acquisition, congratulations. What does that mean uh, for Fortinet and where does that technology fit in? You mentioned software. Can you just take a minute to explain the acquisition impact of Fortinet and where does the tech fit? Well, as I said, we've been driving a lot of this conversion, SASE convergence through our appliances. 
Um, but it sometimes makes sense to put that security closer to the cloud, the peering points or wherever. And so Opaque, we really like their model of building out these hyper peering stations and making sure they've got high speed security there as well as edges. And so um, we bring, we're gonna bring that inside our environment, uh, update it to include some of our, our technology um, but it gives us now great flexibility uh, of applying that security at the SD-WAN edge, the data center edge, and now the cloud edge. Our longer term roadmaps will integrate orchestration capabilities. It also includes a zero trust network access capability as well. So it really, when we looked at our, uh, our SASE framework, uh, we had most of the things in place. This now adds firewall as a service, as well as zero trust network access, giving us the most complete SASE framework in the marketplace. What is the security component of the work at home? You mentioned earlier there's more networks and companies are looking to kind of up level the capabilities. Can you give an example and take us through what that looks like and what companies are thinking about? Because it's not just, here's some extra money for your home bandwidth. <laughs> your people are working there. It's, like, it's got to be industrial strength edge now. It's not just um, you know, temporary. And their kids are home too. So you got their gaming, they're watching Netflix. People are zooming in and doing web access all day long. It's yeah, a work so environment. It, it can be as simple as putting a zero trust network access, you know, agent on there and, and doing some security locally and then going back through a proxy. You know, we believe actually that it's, it can be even better than that, that you can apply mini enterprise security in your house through a next gen firewall, give high availability through SD-WAN, uh, then, you know, expand out the secure access and switching and endpoints. And we can do that today. I think what's going to be key going forward is as you're dealing as IT teams have to deal with more of a consumer approach remotely in the homes, we're going to have to simplify the way things get set up such that you can easily separate out maybe home usage from corporate enterprise usage. So that will be something we'll be working on over the next 18 months. I mean, just the provisioning the hardware. Okay, here you go, plug it in. It should be plug and play. And this is kind of back to the future of where SAS is going. I mean, the old days was plug and play was a technology. Now you take that concept. It has to be auto configured. You have to provision pretty quickly. What's the future of SASE in your mind? Yeah, and so you know, if you think about, you know, coming back to the home usage, then people have dumbed down those routers and the security is very simplistic. So we, people can just plug and play. If you need to be a bit more sophisticated, uh, you're going to need to put some tools in place. We believe long-term that the SASE model, once you've got the platforms in place, once you've got SD-WAN in place, your CASB, uh, your SASE, your Zero Trust, then long-term, you're going to need an orchestration system that's more AI-driven. So we've done a lot of work on AI around security and making sure we can see things very quickly. Um, but the long-term goal, I think, will be around AI ops, AI network ops. Uh, where the system and the big data systems are looking across your network, across these different components to see where there may be an issue. Maybe there's a certain link that's gone down across a certain ISP, we need to bring that back up. Maybe there's a certain QoS to an application in the cloud somewhere, so we need to change the on-ramp. Uh, and so once everything's in place and you have that console and policy engine that can look across everything, then we need to get smarter by looking at the data and the logs, et cetera, and applying some of that AI technology. You know, John, we've been following Fortinet, as you know, for many, many years and watching the evolution of you guys as a company and also as the industry, the new waves are coming in. Um, a lot of the stuff you're doing with the fabric and now the secure driven networking has been kind of on the playbook. So I want to get your thoughts before we get into those topics and define them and kind of unpack them. But generally customers are looking at um, a slew of vendors out there and you have kind of two approaches. You have a platform approach and then you have the, we're an application or fully full stack or SaaS or something. And there's, there's trade-offs between the two and how should customers understand the difference? Because there's different value propositions for each. Um, platforms more enabling, out of the box SaaS or point solution can solve this particular thing, but it may not have that breadth. How should customers think about a platform approach or fabric? And, and, and how should they think about the value and how to engage with that long-term? Yeah, I'm definitely seeing more customers uh, look towards a platform going forward. They just can't manage all the different point solutions. And you, know, you have to train an individual on that product, you have to have a separate management console, you have to integrate it. And so more and more I'm finding customers wanting to converge, which is the basis of SaaS, so consolidate applications onto a platform or security applications. What's important though for that platform is that the consumption model 
uh, is flexible enough to be an appliance, to be a virtual machine and to be cloud delivery. Because uh, as a customer's networks move and their orchestration systems move into different more cloud or they've got their IP enabling their factories, for example, then they need that security to be flexible. So yes, you need to, a platform is the way forward, um, but two things. One is you need a flexible consumption model for it, you know, appliance, virtual machine, and cloud. And then also that platform needs to be very open. It needs to have connectors into the main orchestration systems. It needs to allow people to build API and automation. So uh, yes, you, you need a platform, but it needs to be open and it needs to be flexible. Great, great insight there. And that's exactly what the, the market needs, especially with cloud, the kind of scale. Second follow-up question to that is, how do you tell the difference between a tool, camouflage as a platform? So I have a tool, I want to sell you a tool, but no, it's a platform. So a lot of people are peddling tools and saying they're platforms. How do you know the difference? Well, to me, a platform has much greater scope across the attack surface, first of all. Uh, they attack vectors, whether that be email or application, the network, the endpoint. So a platform is not just of a specific attack vector. It's, it can go across uh, the complete uh, surface. Uh, and then also a platform, uh, is when it's organically built, allows those products to communicate. So then you can build automation across it. It's very hard to build automation across two or three different vendors. They have different APIs, different scripts. So being able to build that automation. And then of course, on top of that, to have a single view, single visibility capability, as well as long-term apply that AI ops across it. Uh, so a platform is very, very different from the, some of the tools I've seen in the marketplace. I want to get to your reaction to a comment that your CEO said uh, about security-driven networking. It underscores what we've been saying for years, blah, 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 he goes on. In this era of hyper-connectivity and expanding networks, with the network edge stretching across the entire digital infrastructure, um, networking and security have to be kind of be there, they're converging, as you mentioned. Describe how you view hyper-connectivity and expanding networks and how the edge stretches across the digital infrastructure. What's, what does that look like? Can you share your vision of that? Well, when you think about networking, if you go back 20 years, when you had these 10 megabit per second connections, really networking and, and routing and switching, they haven't really changed that much over the last eight, you know, 20 years, they've just got a lot faster. We've gone to now to 400 gigabits per second, but the basic functionality is the same, and so it's allowed them to go a lot, lot faster. Um, security is very different. You know, started off with firewalling, then VPN, and then next-gen firewall, SSL inspection, all these functionalities, IPS, have been added, making it a lot harder for it to keep up in the networking. So one of the fundamental principles of security-driven networking is bringing these two things together, but accelerating them either using ASICs and now cloud through our acquisition uh, to allow those to run in a, a converged format. And that's very important, because as I said, there's now more, you can look at it two ways. You can either say the perimeter's expanded, because it used to be a very narrow perimeter at the data center across these areas, or the edges have formed as well. These new edges sitting at the OT environment, sitting at the WAN edge, sitting at the home edge, as I talked about, sitting at the cloud edge. And so the ability to apply that security in very high performance, very high quality security, not just uh, a small sampling of security, a, a full enterprise stack at those edges is going to be critical going forward. And the flexibility to apply in different ways is going to be very important. I think the convergence piece is totally relevant and obviously consolidating into a platform is a great key point there. Um, while I got you here, would you like you, I'd like you to define what is security driven networking and what does it mean to be security driven? So define security-driven networking, and give an example of what it means. Yeah, and so I think it's, I think the WAN edge was one of the best examples of it. I mean, actually, before that next-gen firewall was where you brought firewalling and, and content inspection together, but I think the latest one is definitely the WAN edge, or secure SD-WAN, where you had a networking function, which was to get the users to the right applications. And so they got this application now steering that goes out through there. Well, uh, you also want to apply security there because security into the WAN, you've also got to protect the LAN. And so the ability to run a security stack there, whether it be IPS or application control, uh, is very important. So getting all those networking functions working at high speed, getting all the security functions working at high speed uh, is, the, is the kind of the genesis of security-driven networking. And you can apply it there. We can also apply it in other places at the edge, in the cloud now or at the home. Uh, it's a very, very important concept uh, to be able to run networking and security together at high speeds. 
everyone has their own kind of weird definition of sassy, depending on if you're building your own or different analyst firms. Uh, I noticed you guys have a different take on this. Even Gartner has a different view on this. How do you guys dif differ from that, that definition? And, and what should people be aware of when they hear that? What is the right definition? Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate. I mean, I, th I think Ghana does some good work there and that they define it and you know, they come up with sassy, but this it's like acronym soup. And you know, I want a bit of next gen firewall on my sassy. It's just, it's just so many different terms that confuses the customer. And then what makes it more confusing is that uh, vendors look at their portfolio and go, oh, sassy is a hot topic. I've got a sassy as well. And uh, really, it should be very clear what the definition from Gartner is. It is bringing together security and networking. Now, their definition is that they, uh, you should do that in the cloud, which we agree with as well, but it can't only be in the cloud. The reason it's in the cloud is because not many people have got the ability to run on an appliance very fast. So we believe our difference there is that you should be able to run it on an appliance, virtual machine, and cloud. And then the second kind of difference is that they've defined the components of SaaS as being SD-WAN, CASB, firewalls as a service, zero trust. We also think that the LAN edge is very important. So we would add into that definition the secure access of Wi-Fi and Ethernet switching as well. And so we, we try and point out you know, the Gartner definition. Yeah. And we also point out where we differ. And I think that's fair so the customer can make a good decision. I think it is fair. And I think one of the things I've been saying for years, and I love Gartner, I love the guys over there and gals. I just don't think that their business model is real time as much, but they end up kind of getting it right down the road. But you brought up a good point. And again, I've been saying this for years, cloud changes Gartner's model. Because there's, if you have quadrants, it implies silos, it implies categories. And one of the best things about cloud is it does horizontally scale. So some of the best vendors actually have multiple capabilities that might fall on different quadrants that may or may not be judged on a criteria that meets what cloud's doing. So uh, for instance, ASICs you mentioned, right? That's in there too. You got cloud and ASICs. Is that, well, they've got two different categories. You add the edge in there. If you do all three really great as an integrated converged and consolidated platform, you're technically awesome, but you might not fit in the quadrant. Yes, it's a really good point. I have this conversation with them all the time in that traditionally enterprises have had networking teams and security teams, and they've been in silos, or they, I've had a networking team that just does switching, or just does routing, or just does SD-WAN, and I've had a security team that does web gateway. And then they like to separate them all into different components. Uh, when you look inside those magic quadrants, they're all different. If these are the same vendor, they're different products. And what we like to do is bring it all together in you know, a single operating system, a single appliance or cloud or virtual machine. Sometimes it's not quite, doesn't quite fit the model, um, but in the end, you're trying to do the same. You know, and COVID-19, one of the re real realities that everyone's dealing with is it does expose everything and it expose, and again, it's been a disruption, unforecasted, but it's not like an outage or a flood or a hurricane. It, it happened and it's happening. It really puts the pressure on looking at the network it's looking at how you can have continuous operations. How are you working with your people and workloads, workforces, and apps? You got to have it all there. And if you're not digitally enabled, you're going to be on the wrong side of history. This is what companies are facing every day. And they got to come back and double down on the right project. So every CXO I talk about, that's the number one challenge. I need to come out of the pandemic with a growth strategy and an architecture that's going to allow me to take advantage of the new realities. Hey, it's really good for people work at home. That's cool. Some people are going yeah, to continue think, to do that. Maybe that's normal. Maybe that's a new tactic. And, and it's going to vary by industry as well. So if I'm a you know a retail outlet, I absolutely need 100% uptime for those retail outlets because people are ordering online and they're driving up into it. So it, it has changed the dynamics. It's, for me, working at home, I have to be up all the time. And so. The, uh, the ability to do really good, high quality networking, high availability, high Q of S with this integrated security uh, across the different edges is super critical going forward. I was talking with a network friend of mine. Again, we were having a few Zoom cocktails and doing a little social networking uh, online. And we were like, and we've, and we've mentioned this before in the queue, but we keep coming back to the WAN is the new LAN. And meaning that it's in the old days, LAN was everything, everything, local area network, and you were inside the, the data center, everything was great on premises. WAN is the new LAN. So if you think about it that way, you go, okay, WAN edge, I got a, now a LAN at home, you got an SD WAN at your house. Of course you work for Fortinet, so it's a little bit be beneficial for you, you're, 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 you're a geek there, but this is the new normal where it's all one network. 
It's not just a WAN link, it's a yeah. system. Can you react to that? What's your take on that WAN as first, the new LAN kind of riff? First of all, first of all, I can't be too geeky because I'm the CMO as well. So <laughs> let's, let's not talk about the okay. geekiness. Um, but um, it's just, it just makes, as I keep saying, it's, it's, it's making sure that wherever you may be, uh, you know, you're doing less traveling these days, but that may come back at some point, or whether you're at a branch office or a campus environment, or wherever the applications, and they're moving around in different clouds, in different areas in terms of consumption and workloads. Um, wherever that's happening, you've got to be able to be flexible in applying that security to the different edges, LAN edge, WAN edge, home edge, data center edge. And so the ability to do that uh, while providing high speed and connectivity uh, is very important. And then again, as you go forward and you, you implement that platform approach, so not just the point product, now three or four products working together, uh, being able to apply that policy orchestration and AI ops uh, is going to make sure that they get that user. In the end, it's all about the user experience. Do I have a high quality of experience from whatever application I'm using? That's the key measurement in the end. You know, one observation I would have, we look back at the whole virtualization trend, going back to the early days of VMware, that kind of enabled Amazon and kind of having a large scale kind of infrastructure. Hyperconvergence really kind of collapsed everything together. And, and now you're seeing things with Amazon like Outpost, you're seeing, you know, these non-premises devices, which is basically one cloud operations. Kind of highlights what you're saying here. And I want to get your thoughts on this because the combination of ASICs with cloud it's not a bug, it's a feature. For you guys, that's a value proposition. And it's kind of consistent with some of the big players like AWS when you look at what they're doing and Aperna chips, for instance, what they're putting in the servers. Having that combination of horsepower ASICs with cloud is a guiding principle of the future architecture. Can you share your thoughts? Because obviously you guys are, are announcing that and have that feature. Yeah, well, another reason why we like the opaque acquisition is they were are their major peering hubs into the, the different cloud uh, service providers, they were using hardware. And uh, that hardware, uh, we, we can run hardware and with our ASICs almost 50, 100 times faster than an equipment CPU. So I've got a, a firewall application, I've got an appliance there. I may need 100 virtual machines and, and CPUs there running the same thing. So again, we're coming back to that definition of security-driven networking. In our minds, it can be ASIC, it can be virtual machine and it can be cloud. Now imagine if we can take the best benefits of ASIC and combine that with cloud, uh, that's a great model going forward, again, given that flexibility. So when people think cloud, something has to run on something. It doesn't run in fresh air. So, you know, the big cloud vendors are putting in some ASICs to accelerate some of the AI stuff. And we're going to use the same thing in some of our major, what we call 40 SASE, you know, our naming methodology is 40, whatever it does going forward to provide us that performance and high availability. Now, yes, you're always going to need some flexibility of virtual machines in certain areas, but we think the combination of both, uh, it, it gives us a great advantage. Yeah, and there's definitely evidence that, I mean, there's, a, there's kind of two schools of thought on hardware. Are you a box mover, you know, commodity general purpose, or are you using the hardware in a system architecture? Acceleration has been a huge advantage where I've seen companies doing accelerated Kubernetes processing, you know, for clusters and some, you know, obviously GPUs are out there. It's, it's, it's how you use the hardware. Yeah. That's the really the key, it's, and again, back to the architecture. So, okay, so wrapping up, if you, if you believe that, and you look at the fabric that you guys are having out there, and as it evolves, what's the, what's the next level for Fortnite? How do you see this going forward? You got security driven networking, you got the fabric. What's next? What are you guys working on on the product side? I know you're public, you can't well, really I reveal any future uh, earnings, but give us a taste of kind of the, the direction on the roadmap. I think you know we've got now all the all the kind of component, the underlying components of the platform in terms of the ability to apply appliances, to deliver it by appliances or virtual machine or cloud. Um, we've got a very broad portfolio from endpoint uh, all the way into to the cloud and, and the network. So all those things are in place. Obviously, you always need some features here and there as you go forward in SD WAN and next gen firewall, etc. Um, but I think the long-term, I think, uh, goal for us then is to, uh, again, to apply a bit more intelligence, uh, both from a security perspective and from a, a network perspective, such that we can predict things, we can automatically change things, we can build automation and react to things much more quickly. So well, I think the building blocks are in place. Now I think it's the ability to provide a, a bit more smarts across it 
which of course takes big data and a very specific application programming. And I think uh, definitely our customers are, are asking us about that. And we work very closely with our customers to build out that, to make sure it, it meets their needs going forward. Well, it's great to see the platform continue to grow and, and fill in a uh, holistic view of the, of the landscape from edge to throughout the enterprise. So great strategy and thanks for the update. John Madison, EVP of products and CMO at Fortinet. John, great, great to have you on. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, John. Okay, this is theCUBE conversation here in Palo Alto Studios. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.